、えー、ただいまから安倍内閣。We would like to commence the joint press conference with Prime Minister Abe and President Donald Trump. In the beginning, Prime Minister Abe will speak, which will be followed by the remarks by President Trump. Prime Minister, floor is yours. On the 1st of May, His Imperial Majesty the Emperor acceded to the throne, and we now have the new era called Reiwa. At the dawn of the new era, it is of utmost uh, uh, pleasure that I am able to uh, welcome President Trump and uh, Madame Melania as. Our first state guests in the era of Heisei. They are my dearest friends for myself and for myself, for my wife. With、uh, President Trump, we had the summit talk last month at White, White House, and we celebrated、uh, Melania's birthday together, didn't we? Next month,、uh, he will be visiting Japan again in order to、uh, come to the G20 Osaka summit. Because of the peace and security legislation, U.S. and Japan have become an alliance where we can help one another. The bond has become rock solid. Because of the very close personal relationship uh, with uh, Donald, the bond of U.S. Japan alliance、uh, has become unshakable, the closest in the whole world. In the new era of Reiwa, US and Japan must lead for the peace and prosperity of the region and the international community as the genuinely global partners. This visit of、uh, President and Madame Trump to Japan is a golden opportunity to clearly show the、uh, The unshakable bond to the whole world and inside Japan as well. I'd like to、uh, express my gratitude to the friendship of President Trump and Madame First Lady. At the summit talk today, bearing in mind of the latest North Korean situation, we spent a good amount of time in better aligning our policies. The positions of Japan and the United States in this regard are completely on the same page. President Trump and Madame Melania continue to meet the family members of the abduction victims, just like two years ago when they visited Japan. They encouraged and gave comfort to the members of the victims. Toward the resolution of the most important abduction issue at the earliest possible timing is、uh, what I am、uh, hoping for, and I'm determined that I have to face Chairman Kim Jong un myself directly. Without any conditions, I will meet with the chairman, and I would like to have a discussion frankly in complete candor. President Trump.、Uh, Has expressed strong support to my determination as such by saying that he would support me totally and would not spare any effort in assisting me. Continuously, we will have the close collaboration between the two countries. We shall missing no opportunities and look toward the early resolution of the abduction issue. We will act resolutely. In today's summit meeting, we welcomed. The、uh, steady progress of U.S. Japan cooperation looking toward the creation of free and open Indo Pacific, including the areas such as energy, digital, and infrastructure. Going forward, we will work hand in hand and promote the cooperation for the realization of this common vision of our two nations. We will be promoting、uh, the idea forcefully. With the、uh, Countries concerned, like Australia, India, ASEAN, UK, and France,、uh, we will fortify the cooperation toward the realization of a free and open Indo-Pacific. We will enhance and expand our efforts. We agreed on that. Since、um, President Trump、uh, came to the office, Japanese companies、uh, decided on new investment to the tune of $24 billion to the United States, thereby creating. 45,000 new jobs.
daring tax reform that president conducted thanks to that automotive and energy related to japanese companies are making investment in ohio pennsylvania michigan alabama and kentucky and others they are made, they have decided to make new investments those contributing most in the u.s economy are the japanese companies it's been only one month uh, since the last uh, summit talks. In a short span of one month, Japanese companies uh, increased uh, their investment to the United States uh, by $1 billion. Under, with this vigorous investment appetite, Japanese companies are deciding to make investment uh, to the United States one after another. U.S.-Japan economic relationship is developing in a major way in a modality of bringing in win-win situations. Following the joint statement of September last year, Minister Motegi and Ambassador Lighthizer, USTR, are proceeding with the discussion, and I welcome this discussion. In today's uh, talks uh, between myself and the President Trust, Trump, we should achieve early outcome based upon the uh, trustful relationship uh, between our two nations. We shall accelerate the pace of discussion. We agreed on that. Next month at G20 Osaka Summit, uh, President, uh, Pre uh, Pre President Trump, uh, uh, I am going to welcome him again in Osaka. Looking forward to it. For the success of G20 summit, U.S.-Japan cooperation is indispensable. I will continue to collaborate closely with President Trump. Yesterday, I was able to talk with President Trump on a variety of issues in a relaxed atmosphere like the game of golf, watching sumo wrestling, as well as the dinner where our spy spouses joined. Your friendship and trustful relationship uh, was uh, even more enhanced. The exuberance of joy shown by the crowd that I witnessed uh, in the stadium, as well as the frenzied excitement of the general public when President when presidential cup was handed to Asanoyama, the champion. Indeed, a new page was added to the prestigious history of sumo. Donald, I thank you very much. Tomorrow, together with President Trump, I will go to Yokosuka and visit our escort ship anchored in Yokosuka and show the strong bond of U.S.-Japan alliance to the people in Japan and the world. Lastly, once again, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to Donald and Madame Melania for honoring us with your visit to Japan as the first state guest of the new era of Reiwa. Thank you. Then, President Trump of the United States, floor is yours. Prime Minister Abe, the First Lady and I are profoundly honored to return to this very beautiful nation as Japan's first state guest following the enthronement of His Majesty, the Emperor. On behalf of the United States, we want to thank the Imperial family for this gracious invitation and warm welcome. It was really wonderful. Melania and I are thrilled to be back in the land of the rising sun. It is a true privilege to take part in the splendor of this historic moment and to witness an ancient Japanese tradition as you begin the new imperial era. We look forward to seeing the new emperor continue his father's extraordinary legacy. Yesterday, Milani and I were delighted to join you, Prime Minister, in attending a sumo tournament. I've always wanted to see a sumo tournament, so true. And they are bigger and stronger than I even thought. At your very impressive and new national arena where I presented the first ever U.S. President's Cup to the Sumo Grand Champion. That was something. This morning, we participated in a magnificent welcome ceremony with Their Majesties, the Emperor and Empress, at the Grand Imperial Palace. 
Japan's time-honored customs and exquisite culture fill us with a deep sense of admiration. I want to thank all of the people of Japan for welcoming us to this week and sharing your beloved heritage. It is truly an incredible heritage. This visit has also been a chance for Prime Minister Abe and me to strengthen our close friendship and the friendship between our two nations. The alliance between the United States and Japan is a cornerstone of stability and prosperity in the region and all around the world. The Prime Minister and I continue our close consultation in pursuit of peace and security on the Korean Peninsula. The essence of our approach is peace through strength. And this is a strong alliance indeed. The U.S.-Japan alliance is steadfast and ironclad. We want peace and we want stability. We continue to hope that Chairman Kim seizes the opportunity to transform his country through denuclearization. It is a country with tremendous economic and other potential. The United States also remains committed to the issue of abductions, which I know is a top priority for Prime Minister Abe. Earlier today, I met for the second time with a group of Japanese families who have suffered the unthinkable heartbreak of having their loved ones abducted by North Korea. The United States will continue to support Japan's efforts to bring these abductees home. Our nations are also cooperating on a number of other vital security issues. The United States supports Japan's efforts to improve its defense capabilities. And in recent months, we have greatly expedited the sale of large amounts of defense equipment to Japan made in the United States. We make the best equipment in the world. In 2018, Japan was one of the world's top purchasers of American defense equipment, and it has just announced its intent to purchase 105 brand-new F-35 stealth aircraft. Stealth, because the fact is, you can't see them. This purchase would give Japan the largest F-35 fleet of any U.S. ally. America and Japan's close security ties are grounded in shared values. Our armed forces train and serve together all around the world. Tomorrow, I will visit American troops stationed alongside the Japanese Self-Defense Forces right here in Japan. On behalf of all Americans, I want to thank the Japanese people for graciously hosting our service members and military families. The United States and Japan are also working to improve our economic relationship based on the principles of fairness and reciprocity. We are currently negotiating a bilateral trade agreement that would benefit both of our economies. Our goal is to reduce our trade deficit with Japan, remove trade barriers and barriers of all kinds, so that U.S. exports will really have a fair and very profound footing. Just over one week ago, U.S. beef gained full access to Japanese markets for the first time since 2003. We hope to have even more to announce on the trade very, very soon. And finally, today I am pleased to confirm that Prime Minister Abe and I have agreed to dramatically expand our nation's cooperation in human space exploration. Japan will join our mission to send U.S. astronauts to space. We'll be going to the moon. We'll be going to Mars very soon. It's very exciting. And from a military standpoint, there is nothing more important right now than space. This is an exciting starting point for greater collaboration on many other things. Mr. Prime Minister, our visit this week is a moving reminder of the strength of the U.S.-Japan alliance and the deep friendship between our people. It is a profound honor to be in Japan at this important moment in your nation's history. For this new imperial era, your nation has chosen the name Rewa, meaning beautiful harmony. America shares this wonderful aspiration for the future, and I look forward to continuing our tremendous partnership as we work together to bring this noble vision to life. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
Now, the floor is open for accepting questions. Japanese media first, followed by the uh, press entourage accompanying the president. Japanese person, please raise your hand and recognized by me. Regarding the American press, uh, Ms. Sanders uh, from uh, US uh, will uh, decide the uh, questions. Uh, first, uh, the questions from the Japanese media, please. Kuribayashi from Yomiuri newspaper. I have a question to Prime Minister Abe on abduction. Japan-Korea summit meeting. Do you think that the problem would be resolved in one time meeting with the Chairman Kim, or do you have to go through a plural number of meetings in order to seek solution? By what time frame would you like to realize the summit talk? Is it going to happen by the end of this year? In that sense, in that case, could, could there be tripartite discussion involving U.S. as well? Regarding the relationship with North Korea, first of all, I have to note the fact that President uh, Trump uh, cracked open the shell of distrust uh, with Chairman Kim Jong-un, shared the bright future beyond the denuclearization and urging North Korea to act. It's a new approach. I'd like to pay tribute to his uh, new approach. Most important thing is uh, the solution of abduction issue. And it means that I'm resolved that I have to directly see Chairman Kim face to face. Without attaching any conditions, I meet him and then frankly, and I must have discussion in complete candor. At the summit talk today, to my resolution as such, President Trump expressed that he will give all out support. He will spare no efforts in rendering assistance to my efforts. It was a very strong support. President Trump and family members of uh, abducted uh, victims uh, had a meeting and President Trump would look into the eyes of the family members uh, directly and he was listening to the remarks uh, very seriously. We have to resolve this abduction issue. This is the thought that I have, which was shared by President Trump. Once again, looking toward the resolution of uh, abduction issue, I'd like to pay tribute and gratitude to the uh, uh, lavish uh, understanding and uh, support. Now, including the points that you asked, uh, on the topic of a summit talk between Japan and North Korea, as of now, there is no specific goal in sight. But uh, based upon the Japan, North Korea, Pyongyang uh, declaration, we want to solve uh, comprehensive issues, uh, pending issues like abduction, nuclear missiles. We must come to terms uh, with the unfortunate past, and uh, we must normalize uh, the diplomatic relations. Uh, this uh, line is unchanged. Abduction issue is the most important issue for Abe administration. Family members of abductees have advanced in their age. As the president of LDP, I have a certain term, your question sort of implied. And also, a one-time meeting could resolve the issue, you asked. Irrespective of my term in office, I have to do everything I can, all out efforts of myself for the resolution of this issue. As the prime minister, I have responsibility as such going forward. I will discharge this responsibility, and in order to do that, as the Prime Minister, day in and day out, I will do my best and all our efforts I will endeavor. The United States' first question will go to Vivian Salma of the Wall Street Journal. Thanks, Sarah. Mr. President, Prime Minister. Uh, Mr. President, I hope you'll indulge me with two questions since we're far from home. Uh, the first one is, um, so if Kim Jong-un is not violating his promise to you by firing small weapons, as you said in your tweet yesterday, what would you consider a violation exactly? Well, first of all, let me say that I think that uh, Kim Jong-un 
or Chairman Kim, as some people say, is looking to create a nation that has uh, great strength economically. I think he's very much — I talk to him a lot about it, and he's very much into the fact that he believes, like I do, that North Korea has tremendous economic potential, like perhaps few other developing nations anywhere in the world. And I think that he is looking to develop that way. He knows that with nuclear, that's never going to happen. Only bad can happen. He understands that. He is a very smart man. He gets it well. So I think that he is uh, — he is going to try at some point. I'm in no rush at all. The sanctions remain. We have our hostages back. We, as you know, are getting the remains, continuing to get the remains. A lot of good things are happening. And very importantly, there's been no nuclear testing for two years. I looked at a chart the other day. During the past administration, there were many numbers that were very high, like 10 and 12 and 18, having to do with missile launches and nuclear testing. And for the last two years, on the bottom, it had zero and zero. So I am uh, very happy with the way it's going, and uh, intelligent people agree with You're me. You're not bothered at all by the small missiles? No, I'm not. I am personally not. Okay, thank you. Um, one more question, Mr. President. Uh, last week, you declared that you won't work with Democrats in Congress until they stop investigating you. So how are you going to explain to your voters when it comes at the expense of some of the promises that you made to them? Well, there's never been a president more transparent. Uh, the Mueller report came out. No obstruction, no collusion, no nothing. It's a beautiful report. Uh, the Democrats cannot understand what happened. They really thought they had some people on their side because, as you know, the people doing the investigation were 18 extremely angry Democrats, many of whom worked for Hillary Clinton and supported Hillary Clinton. And Bob Mueller, I guess you could say he wasn't a friend of mine, but he did something that was really the right thing to do. They were very disappointed. They can't get over the fact that uh, never spoke to Russia, never dealt with Russia, having to do with the subject we're talking about. And I will say this, that without question, uh, we have done a job like few presidents have done. The only thing you can say about me that some people may not like is that I've created one of the greatest economies anywhere in the world. In fact, when I first met with yesterday with uh, Prime Minister Abe, the first thing he did was congratulate me on the incredible economy that we have in the United States. So I think that we will work with them. Uh, we have a USMCA, we have a deal with Canada and Mexico that everybody wants. I think it's all done, and I think they probably want to be doing that. As you know, Ambassador Lighthizer is here right now. Uh, that's a deal that's gotten universal praise. Unions love it. Farmers love it. Manufacturers love it. You won't have companies leaving and going to Mexico and going to Canada and going like they were for many, many years. It's a great deal. I would imagine that Nancy Pelosi will approve that. I would think it would be very hard not to, but we'll see. But certainly, as things get approved, I would love to sign them. It's only good for our country. I'm only interested in what's good for our country. It's very important. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Prime Minister, I hope you'll also indulge me with two questions since I'm far from home. Um, did you get any reassurances today uh, from President Trump that he will not impose tariffs on cars or auto parts six months from now? I want to hear this answer, too. <laughs> Well, last year in September, between President Trump and I agreed on joint statement regarding including auto and auto parts. Currently, based upon the joint statement of September, Minister Motegi and Ambassador Lighthizer are discussing and talking about this matter. So. We agreed to accelerate the talk as such. That was the agreement I reached with President Trump. My second question? So I left my translator, so. That's about four. <laughs> yeah. I think probably that's enough. I think okay. the, your compatriots will not be happy with okay. another question. All right. right? Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Once again, a question from Japanese media, please. 
Sugawara from uh, Nihon Television. I have a question uh, to Prime Minister Abe about the U.S.-Japan trade agreement. Uh, before the election, there are some voices of anxiety expressed from some trade uh, organizations. Now the uh, tariff level, the maximum that uh, you can have in tariff uh, is at the same of TPP. Is that unchanged? Now, regarding the calendar, in the beginning of the talk, uh, in August, uh, there could be a major statement announcement. Prime Minister, that was the co comment of President Trump. Do you agree with him? And in today's talk, uh, what was the time frame? What was uh, the scheduling of those matters between US and Japan? Trade friction or trade debate is happening. What was uh, the outlook on that relationship as for Japan? Is there any mitigating role that Japan can take? Two questions, I guess. Last year, in September, President Trump and I agreed on the joint statement. Based upon that, Minister Motegi and Ambassador Lighthizer, USTR, are vigorously conducting discussions and talks. This time round, Minister Motegi and Ambassador Lighthizer, between them, I think a quite in-depth discussion was held. That is, I am informed. With President Trump, uh, we agreed that uh, let us accelerate the talks between the ministers. So we have joint statement, and that must be the grand premise upon which we must create win-win result, uh, which would be beneficial to both nations. That is my thinking. Now, next point of question. U.S.-China trade Negotiation. I think that was uh, the question. Sino-U.S. relationship, respectively, they occupy number one and number two uh, economic uh, powerful position of the world. Between the two countries, uh, stable economic relationship is built. That would benefit uh, not only Japan, but the Asian countries and to the whole world. It's very important that there be stable economic relationship with a view as such. I hope that uh, continuously U.S. and China will go through dialogue in order to seek constructive solution of the problem. Today, with uh, the president, we discussed economic issues. And the global economy was something that uh, we also addressed. Uh, there are a variety of uh, challenges uh, in the global economy we, dis we discussed in the today's talk. I'd like to add, though, that very importantly, I have nothing to do with TPP, okay? Nothing to do. I'm not bound by anything that anybody else signs with respect to the United States. TPP would have destroyed our automobile industry and many of our manufacturers. We are not involved in TPP, so what other countries agree to is not binding at all in the United States. As far as China is concerned, uh, they were going to make a deal. I think they probably wish they made the deal that they had on the table before they tried to renegotiate it. They would like to make a deal. We're not ready to make a deal. And we're taking in tens of billions of dollars of tariffs. And that number could go up very, very substantially, very easily. But I think sometime in the future, China and the United States will absolutely have a great trade deal. And we look forward to that. Okay? Thank you. The United States' second question goes to Jeff Mason of Reuters. Yeah, sure, Jeff. Thank you, sir. Um, I'm going to follow Vivian's lead and ask two questions if I can. Uh, first, as a follow-up on trade, can you lay out specifically, Mr. President, what Japan needs to do to avoid auto tariffs and before you come back to the G20 in another month or so, uh, do you expect talks with China to get back on track this year at all? Uh, first of all, getting to the G20, I think that we are uh, very much discussing different things with Japan. We have an unbelievably large imbalance, as you know, trade imbalance, which has been there for many, many years, uh, Japan having the big advantage. They are... Uh, brilliant business people, brilliant negotiators, and put us in a very tough spot. But I think we will have a deal with Japan. Likewise, I think we will have a deal with China 
sometime into the future. Uh, many companies are leaving China right now because of the tariffs. Uh, China is subsidizing a lot of industry because, you know, foolishly, some people said that uh, the American taxpayer is paying the tariffs of China. No, no, no. It's not that way. They're paying a small percentage, but our country is taking in billions and billions of dollars. Our farmers, out of all of that money, the tens of billions of dollars, we're giving a relatively small percentage to our farmers who have really been a focal point of what's gone on with trade. As you know, they've earmarked and they've gone after the farmer, thinking that if they hurt the farmer, I'm going to negotiate a bad deal for the rest of the country. I'll tell you, the American farmer, these are patriots. These are great patriots. They don't want subsidy. We've had meetings, and I've had meetings with 32, 35, 40 farmers at one time, numerous times, and they don't want subsidy. I've told that to you before, Jeff. They want a level playing field. That's all they want, because they're better than anybody in the world. And they've told me, I said, you know, I'm going to get you subsidy while China takes advantage of us and China takes advantage of you by pinpointing you. They said, we don't want subsidy, sir. All we want is a laying play, really a level playing field. Uh, the American farmer, these are great patriots. They are unbelievable people. And they're with me 100 percent. I believe that we will have a very good deal with China sometime into the future, because I don't believe that China can continue to pay these really hundreds of billions of dollars in tariffs. I don't believe they could do that. You know, businesses are leaving China by the hundreds, by the thousands, going into areas that are non-tariffed, including the United States, by the way. But they're going to different parts of Asia, Vietnam, frankly, Japan. But they're going to a lot of places, but they're also coming to the United States because people don't want to pay the tariff. And if you look, there is no tariff to pay. All you have to do is move your company to the United States. There is no 25 percent tariff. But with all of that being said, I think that there's a very good chance that the United States and China will have a very good trade deal. And Mr. President, a follow up on North Korea. You tweeted about North Korea uh, yesterday. Do you believe that they violated UN resolutions with the, the short range missile launch? And does it give you pause at all to be appearing to side with a, a brutal dictator instead of with a fellow American, the former Vice President Joe Biden? Well, Kim Jong-un made a statement that Joe Biden is a low IQ individual. He probably is, based on his record. Uh, I think I agree with him on that. But at the same time, uh, my people think it could have been a violation, as you know. I view it differently. I view it as a man. Perhaps he wants to get attention. And perhaps not. Who knows? It doesn't matter. All I know is that there have been no nuclear tests. There have been no ballistic missiles going out. There have been no long-range missiles going out. And I think that someday we'll have a deal. I'm not in a rush. Tremendous sanctions being put on the country of North Korea. And again, Kim Jong-un understands the unbelievable economic potential that country has. It's located between Russia and China on one side and South Korea on the other. And it's all waterfront property. It's a great location, as we used to say in the real estate business. And I think he sees that. Uh, and I have to tell you one other country. I really believe that Iran would like to make a deal. And I think that's very smart of them. And I think that's a possibility to happen also. But in terms of criticism that you're sort of supporting a dictator instead of an American vice president? Well, when I look at what's been done by our vice president and the president, when I look at the horrible Iran deal that they made, look what happened since I terminated the Iran deal. Look what has happened to Iran. Iran, when I first came into office, was a terror. They were fighting in many locations all over the Middle East. They were behind every single major attack, whether it was Syria, whether it was Yemen, whether it was individual smaller areas, whether it was taking away oil from people. They were involved with everything. Now they're pulling back because they've got serious economic problems. We have massive, as you know, massive sanctions and other things. I mean, we just said the other day, steel, copper, different elements of what they used to sell. Uh, the oil is essentially dried up. And I'm not looking that to hurt Iran at all. I'm looking to have Iran say no nuclear weapons. We have enough problems in this world right now with nuclear weapons. No nuclear weapons 
for Iran. And I think we'll make a deal. I think Iran, again, I think Iran has tremendous economic potential. And I look forward to letting them get back to the stage where they can show that. I think Iran, I know so many people from Iran. These are great people. It has a chance to be a great country with the same leadership. We're not looking for regime change. I just want to make that clear. We're looking for no nuclear weapons. If you look at the deal that Biden and President Obama signed, they would have access, free access, to nuclear weapons where they wouldn't even be in violation in just a very short period of time. What kind of a deal is that? So we can't have that. Plus, there were many other things they did that were very bad. So I don't take sides as to who I'm in favor, who I'm not. But I can tell you that Joe Biden was a disaster. His administration with President Obama, they were basically a disaster when it came to so many things, whether it was economy, whether it was military defense, no matter what it was, they had a lot of problems. So I'm not a fan. One question from the Prime Minister, sir. Uh, do you share President Trump's optimism about North Korea and his position about the recent uh, missile launches? And also, could you tell us, and perhaps tell us what you told the President, uh, what you expect or would like to achieve if you travel to Iran and hold talks with Iran? President Trump conducted a summit meeting with North Korea together with Chairman Kim. He agreed on the denuclearization of Korean Peninsula, and he signed the document. Of, there was a great significance in that. He cracked open the shell of uh, distrust so that the future bright future can be shared and urge North Korea to act accordingly. This, this was a new approach, which I welcome. Of course, the North Korean denuclearization, for many years, this was not uh, achieved. But be precisely because it was not achieved, difficult as it is, uh, President Trump just said that uh, he will make a challenge with new approach. So we are neighbor to North Korea. We are most threatened among countries. So as the prime minister of such a country, such act of a prime minister, uh, President Trump, and uh, uh, policy, I, I have a trust in it, and I would like to support it. In this context, the abduction issue is of paramount importance in Hanoi, at the summit talk in Hanoi. President Trump, uh, on behalf of my thinking, uh, he conveyed and communicated my thinking to Kim Jong-un. And I, as well as the country of Japan, are thankful. A moment ago, President uh, Trump met with the uh, family members of the abductees, and the family members were very appreciative of uh, President Trump. So his approach is something that uh, everybody wants to have hope. So that was the view of the families of abductees. Now, the launching of the missiles this time, on the 9th of May, North Korea launched a short-range ballistic missile. This is uh, violating the Security Council resolution. So my reaction is, as I said earlier on, it is, of, uh, it is of great regret. But at the same time, between Kim Jong-un and President Trump, certain new approach was taken. And that is something that I'd like to pay tribute to. In any event, denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula is the goal. So U.S., Japan, South Korea, and uh, uh, Europe and other countries uh, will act in cooperation so that the uh, U.S. and North Korean process would be supported. What about Iran? There was a question about Iran. Regarding Iran, regarding the JCPA, we have expressed our position at appropriate timing. Peace and stability of Middle East is very important for Japan and the United States and also for the international community as a whole. It's very important. In this context, 
in order to uh, co make a contribution for the uh, peace and stability of the region, we would like to discharge whatever we can do. So whatever it is possible for Japan to do, we absolutely would like to do these. Going forward between Japan and the United States, there should be a close collaboration so that this, this tension surrounding uh, Iran should be mitigated and uh, alleviated, and uh, it shouldn't uh, culminate in the armed conflict. Thank you very much. With this, uh, we will conclude the press conference, joint press conference with President Trump and Prime Minister Abe. Thank you very much. Please uh, remain seated while until the leaders uh, exit the room. Thank you. Thank you.